All right. Well, today I wanted to talk about how you can tell if you're a good looking man. The first and quickest way to tell if you're good looking is dating apps. If you're an attractive man, you're going to get lots of matches, plain and simple. That's the raw truth. It doesn't matter if it's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, or even freaking Christian Mingle. As long as you put up high quality pictures of yourself and good lighting, this will do. Good looking guys on average will typically get 10 or more matches a day, sometimes even more. You will get an array of matches ranging from very average looking women to very attractive women, ultimately depending on the city you're in, if you're in the suburbs, or well, if you're out in the country, maybe not as many tra- attractive women to be honest. <laughs> a lot of the time, the women will initiate the first message. In online dating, looks are all women really have to go off of. Uh, Yeah, sure, you can write a witty bio, but most girls don't really read your bio, and they typically swipe left or right in less than a second. However, height also plays an enormous role in online dating apps. Like, You could be a decent looking guy, but if you're above six feet tall, you're going to get a lot more matches than a good looking guy who's say around, you know, 5'7 to 5'9. Um, a lot of women on dating apps, they actually set their filter to six feet or above. Uh, I think a lot of guys know this. I've met many girls and even dates that have told me that they do this specifically. Like I know a girl I went on a date with last summer and she literally told me that um, she pays for Hinge's paid version because that allows her to filter guys over six feet tall. So it's it's real. Um It definitely is. However, if you're an average height guy with a a really good looking face, you're also going to do very well. And sometimes you can even do better than like a decent looking guy who is like very tall. Looks in, you know, looks particularly your face and in your height on dating apps is really like 95% um, of what you need to be successful on these dating apps. And there's really not much else. <laughs> it's re- it's really all about look. Uh, the next way that is pretty reliable is going out to bars and nightclubs. Really any type of nighttime environment. Um, in a nighttime environment, the alcohol is flowing and women are more likely to show who they're attracted to. The raw truth is that if you're good looking, you're going to get approached at bars and clubs by women. Um, a lot of guys in the red pill space um, say things like, Oh, you, you you can't stand around and you know expect women to approach you, and, and that's true to a to a large extent. Most of the time, even a good looking guy is not going to be approached, but you you still do get approached uh, from time to time. You know, it, it happens semi frequently. Um, if you've never been approached by women in nightlife venues, I hate to say it, but the cold hard truth is that you're probably not that good looking and probably just average looking. Outside of like women approaching. Uh, women will be giving you lots of signals throughout the night. Uh, most of the time, they'll just be locking eyes with you for a few seconds. Other times, you know, they'll move really close to you, especially on the dance floor. But even at, even like in other areas of the bar or the club, they'll kind of put themselves in your vicinity and they'll they'll tend to glance at you multiple times to let you know that they're checking you out. <laughs> Once you actually approach women at bars or nightclubs as a good looking man, you're mostly you're you're going to get mostly positive receptions. Um, occasionally, a girl will be in like a serious relationship. She'll be married, or you're not their specific type. But really, the vast majority of your approaches will go very well. They're going to be most most women are going to be receptive to your approach as a good looking man. Even women that are in a relationship or are married, they'll still be happy to talk with you. When you're a good looking guy, sometimes they'll be happy to even introduce you to one of their girlfriends um, or just shoot the breeze with you for a while. About a year and a half ago, um, I was I was at a, uh, a bar in the city with with some friends. And, you know, this this blonde girl, she was probably about five, two, five, three. Um, she was around she was about 22, 23. She just walked right up to me and introduced herself. Um, she was fairly drunk. Actually, she was very drunk. Um, so I guess she was just kind of feeling bold. I was pretty drunk myself too. And within about a minute, we started making out. For for context, I'm 6'2", and luckily at that time, I was in, in, in pretty good shape. I had a good hairstyle that made it appear that I had a full head of hair. 
and I was dressed semi-casually for the spot we were at. I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I can say for myself being someone who's above average looking, I get approached, you know, out at venues maybe once every couple months, um, depending on how often I go out. You know, a lot of people, like I said, there's a there's a lot of people that say, uh, as, as a man, you're never going to get approached. Uh, it's just not true. If, if you're above average looking or you're a good looking guy, you're going to get approached fairly often. It just happens. Contrast this to when I was back in college many years ago when I was 300 pounds. I can tell you I was absolutely never approached. And the only difference between then and now is a change in my looks. I have a pretty similar personality as I had back then. Uh, so don't don't listen to those pickup guys. <laughs> the next way to tell if you're a good looking man is how often random women lock eyes with you in public. Uh, this is this is tough, but really ask yourself, you know, how often does this happen? Um, how often do you turn heads? Yeah, as a good looking man, uh, random women will make eye contact with you on a fairly consistent basis. It, it doesn't even really matter if you're at the grocery store, you know, you're at the mall, you're at a concert, um, you name it. The environment doesn't really matter. Uh, when you're at a good looking man, women will notice you and a lot of the time, they're going to lock eyes with you. They're, they're going to make that eye contact with you and kind of give you a, a, a subtle signal that you know they notice you and that they're interested. Sometimes it'll be an enthusiastic smile. Sometimes it'll be a grin. Other times, even a slight wink. You got to remember, uh, women are visual creatures just like men. And when they like what they see and if they're available, they will make it fairly obvious. Uh, this isn't always the case. You know, sometimes a woman is shy. And she may not always lock eyes with you and may even look down at the ground. Um, but the next time you're walking through like a crowded mall or a crowded city center, pay attention to the amount of women that lock eyes with you. And this will a lot of the time tell you kind of where you stand on the look scale. I know it sounds harsh, but you know, th this is, this is one of the surefire ways to really tell, you know, if you are a good looking. The next way to tell is in your daily interactions with people. When you're a good looking man, you have a halo effect, especially with women. In my experience, cashiers, bartenders, and servers will just be much nicer to you in general. To give you an example, let's just say you're in, you're in Chipotle and you walk up to the girl at the counter. Now, for, and you're a good looking man, for most customers, the girl typically will give a, what can I get you question. But if you're good looking, It'll be slightly different. She'll ask you the same question, what can I get you? But it's in a slightly more like positive, uplifting, flirty tone, um, often with a smile. Uh, this isn't always the case. You know, if the store is very busy, she may speak with you the same way. Um, but even then, it'll still be semi-obvious. Um, another example would be, a, like I say, let's just say you're, you're walking up to a bartender and she takes your, if you're good looking, you're going to notice a lot of the time, um, their pupils dilating when they ask you, Hey, what can I get you? You know, you'll, you'll notice the pupils dilating and then you'll kind of see a little bit of spark in their eyes or their smile. For those that are good looking, you, you, you understand kind of where I'm coming from. Um, you know, being good looking, women will be maintaining eye contact, you know, longer during the conversation than she would an average looking guy. Um, she'll tend to keep this conversation going longer as well. So let's just say you're talking to a girl at a party. You're talking about just pretty surface level stuff. You're talking about your careers. You're talking about, you know, the, the different friends you both know. If you're a good looking man, uh, they're going to be really maintaining eye contact pretty much most of the conversation. Whereas let's just say if you're an average looking guy, you're going to notice that they're only really maintaining eye contact about 30% of the time, maybe even like 20% of the time to, to quantify it. And then also like when the conversation starts to die down, um, if you're a good looking man, you know, a lot of women will, will think of the next question to ask you. Whereas if you're more of an average looking guy, if the conversation starts to die off, a lot of the time, um, a lot of the times, you know, they'll either find an excuse to get out of the conversation, you know, or they'll just kind of let it run dry uh, naturally. 
Um, and there's, you know, like I said, you could be a very, very smooth conversationalist as an average looking guy. Um, but you're going to notice that, you know, the conversations just aren't going to, you know, be as, be as long and effective as let's just say a good looking guy with just average social. Like I said, women are visual creatures and, you know, they enjoy speaking with men who they find very attractive, you know, even at work, um, People will, if you're good looking, people will stop by your desk more frequently to ask you questions. Maybe they're going to ask you how your weekend went. Uh, pretty much almost every interaction you have with women will be positive. Um, the Unless someone is in a very bad mood. Uh, but contrast this with an unattractive man. Um, women will just want to get out of the conversation as quickly as possible. Um, I made a video uh, on how to tell if you're a sub five male. Um, so feel free to watch that if you if you have some. I would say the most obvious way to tell if you're good looking is it really comes down to your facial features. Also, you know, your frame, your height, and of course your hair. Um, well, as Andrew Tate says, uh, go into the bathroom, look deep into your eyes, and ask yourself, do I have a strong jawline? Am I six feet tall? Do I have a good frame? Do I have a full head of hair? <laughs> All kidding aside, uh, good looking men tend to have stronger features, such as a stronger jawline, high cheekbones, a prominent chin, good eyes, straight white teeth, and a full head of hair. Um, and obviously, as mentioned, your height and your frame also affect how you're perceived. And if you're, you're tall and, and you have a good frame, this, is, this will definitely help in you being perceived as good looking even if you're more of like, let's just say like an above average looking guy or even like a, just an average looking tall guy in my experience. The next way to tell is during your relationship with a woman. When you're a good looking man, um, your girlfriend will really just treat you much better in the relationship. They're gonna wanna give you consistent sex, compliment you more, and just do nice things for you all the time. Um, they do this as they're, one, they're genuinely physically attracted to you, or as Rich Cooper calls it, they have genuine burning desire. Uh, they know that other women are going to find you attractive and they just don't want to lose you to another woman that may come around. Um, when you compare this to how, let's just say, an average looking guy is treated, the woman a lot of the time uh, knows that he won't be able to find someone else very easily and she'll know kind of deep down that she just has more leverage in that relationship. Um, she typically won't do as many nice things for them. And the relationship is, let's just say it's on thin ice more often. Um, of course, you know, I'm generalizing, but this has definitely been my experience. Um, I've been in relationships as a fairly attractive man and um, also been in relationships as someone who was more average looking. What I can say is when I was overweight and balding, well, what do you know? I wasn't in any relationships. The next way to tell has to do with when you meet your girlfriend's family. When you meet your girlfriend's family as a good looking man, I've noticed that the women in her family will be very receptive to you because, you know, biologically, you know, when they think about it from like a genetic lineage perspective, they want their daughter to date and marry a good looking man um, because that good looking man is good genetic material, um, regardless of how much money he makes uh, and what his status is, what his job is. Those are things that can be can be changed over time. Um, to give you an example, like I said, I'm not the most attractive guy in the world. I consider myself above average looking. I was dating a girl back in 2018 and she had taken me to a family gathering. Um, it was like a graduation party for like one of her cousins. Um, and at the time I had, I'd used a lot of gel in my hair, um, as it was fairly long at the time. So it was styled up about like three to four inches. Um, you know, I, I had had a hair trans, I had two hair transplants previous to this years, years back. As I mentioned, I was, I was just severely balding and I even shaved my head at one point, but to get to the point, you know, her aunt walked right up to us and said, wow, he has nice hair and he's cute <laughs> in a funny, sarcastic way. However, you know, I can also remember meeting uh, my other girlfriend's family that I had in my freshman year of college when I was uh, just fairly average looking. And that was when I was just kind of starting to gain a lot of weight where I could tell like her family just wasn't very impressed. Um, 
you know, I remember her mom saying, hi, hi, nice to meet you. Um, but that was pretty much it. Um, they, they didn't ask a lot of questions. They didn't make, you know, any flirty jokes <laughs> like my, my girlfriend's aunt, you know. So if you're an average looking guy, you really need to prove yourself to your girlfriend's family, um, especially the women um, I've noticed. Um, subconsciously, if you're an average, look, if you're just an average looking guy, you know, her, her family, they, they don't really see you as like great genetic material. So they're going to really want to see like really good provider traits before they show approval, you know, your job, your status, you know, your confidence, your charisma, um, as an average looking guy, those are going to really matter more. If you're kind of lacking in one of those areas, you know, they m really might not give approval you know, to your girlfriend. Um, and I know that might sound harsh as well, but, you know, that's been my experience and that's been the you know, experience of a lot of other guys that I've, I've talked to. Uh, this one's kind of br brutal. This has to do with how you're treated within your own family. So another way you can tell is how engaged your family, particularly your female relatives are with you. Now, of course, you know, most of the time your mom and your grandmother they're going to call you handsome, but you know, this actually doesn't mean much. Um, they mainly do this to like boost your self-esteem because of the part of them wants you to carry on, you know, their, their genetic lineage, you know, most of the time though, you know, if you're just an average looking guy or you're, you're more unattractive, they're, they're not going to be very interested in how your life is going. Um, that's crazy to say when I was very much overweight, um, I remember my aunt asking me like, the bare minimum questions at Christmas dinner. Um, I remember she asked, she's like, oh, how's school? And before I could even finish my answer, she was like, no, oh, that's great. And then she moved on to ask my cousin another another question. You know, when I'd see her at that time, um, it would be a very quick hello, um, you know, a hug, it will be a hug hello and a hug bye and Maybe one quick question she didn't really care the answer about the answer to. <laughs> but fast forward, you know, a couple years, you know, I had lost 120 pounds. Um, I had my first hair transplant. I think it was two years later. And overall, I was looking just way better uh, than before. And I remember my aunt enthusiastically saying, oh, my gosh, like you lost so much weight. You look so good. Um, you know, what have you been doing? Have you been running? Have you been in the gym? How's college? What do you want to do after you graduate? Are you, do you have a girlfriend? Um, she must have asked me like 10 to 15 questions, like with an enthusiastic tone, as well as like enthusiastic, like facial expression. And this was like all within a span of like two years, um, two Christmases later, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, I can't make this stuff up. Like the bat, the black pill, it doesn't just affect your dating prospects. You know, it, it impacts like your whole life. Um, it even impacts your own, how your own family treats you. Um, it's just all subconscious, you know, my aunt wasn't doing this, you know, maliciously or, you know, on, on purpose, you know, it was all subconscious. Um, it's not like my aunt is, was consciously saying to herself, well, he's overweight and bald, so I'm going to treat him worse. No, but like when you're an attractive man, um, you literally see the halo effect even play out within your own family. Um, this is probably the most brutal out of all these reasons as like in an ideal world, like your family ideally should always treat you the same, regardless of how good you look. Um, Next time you're at a family gathering, like really pay attention to like how your female relatives like treat you. Um, it's just something I've experienced. The next reason you can tell if you're a good looking man is how often do you get invited to you know, parties, events, and various social gatherings? Uh, not just by your main group of friends, but you know, coworkers, girls who are acquaintances. At the end of the day, if you're a good looking man, uh, most people just want you to be at social. Events. Sometimes a girl might, it might be because a girl might like you. Other times, you know, you might get invited by a girl to a social event because she wants you to, wants to hook you up with her friend. What I can say is when I was overweight and bald, 
it was like mostly, if not all, got just guy friends that would occasionally invite me to parties that I talked about in previous videos. But it was kind of like a pity invite. They weren't very enthusiastic about me being there. One of the parties, I got kicked out. <laughs> you guys should check out that video. Getting invited to parties and social events, it's not the same as it was about like, you know, four to five years ago. Like remote work is much more prevalent nowadays. And there are some good looking guys that just don't have a big social circle. Uh, but the majority of the time, if you're a good looking man, it's going to be very easy for you to have a thriving social life. People are people are going to invite you to stuff um, at the end of the day. So the next last reason I'll talk about is women from your past will randomly hit you up if you're a good looking man. Um, occasionally, you'll have girls that you used to date months or years ago just randomly reach out to you out of the blue just to see how you're doing. They'll typically suggest that you guys meet up or that they miss you and they want to see you again. Sometimes they do this because maybe they enjoyed hooking up with you back then when you were dating. Um, other times they want you as their boyfriend and they're hoping to start fresh. Maybe you guys dated for a little bit and um, something for whatever reason, something didn't work out. Um, they're going to want to, you know, give that another try. Uh, but deep down, you know, they're, they're, they're reaching out to you, not because they care about you, um, but they view you as good genetic material. And for that reason, they want to rekindle things as opposed to if you're just an average looking guy or you're unattractive, this is going to rarely and probably never happen unless you were in like a very long-term relationship with the girl. And, and for whatever reason, they see you as their best option. There are tons of other ways to tell if you're a good looking man, like your dating history. These, those were the top 10 that I believe are very reliable um, for you to kind of figure out kind of where you're at in the look scale. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, comment down below any other ways you can think of, and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, take care.